guys welcome back to the channel uh gonna do a little video today a little different what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna show you how i start off my on the water classes uh the few steps that i take to make sure that their unit um is is as best as it can be before we start trying to really dial it in and adjust it so i'm going to show you what i do the steps i go through the settings i set and exactly how i approach the beginning of every on the water class and we're going to do this on active captain and uh that way you can see the steps i go through with the unit so let's go okay so here are the initial steps i take when setting up a unit um, for a class or just even my own units. The first thing and the utmost important is calibrating the compass. Um, I believe the units operate better. Of course, the AHRS operates better. The you know the automatic orientation works better. Everything works better when you calibrate the compass. And there are a lot more uh, advantages to it, but I have those in other videos. But first thing I do is I go all the way back and I make sure my gain is set on 68. Does this mean that gain will always be set on 68? No, but it is a fantastic starting point. Uh, you know my rules with depth range, depth range being 8 feet deeper than the depth. And I use forward 30 for crappie, forward uh, 50 to 60 for bass fishing. Um, now we're going to go into the appearance and color gain at 80. Color limit, of course, at 0. Um I'm just not a big fan of it. I'm not a big fan of it. So let's go into the grid, the layout. I'm going to make sure my grid overlay is off. Of course, scroll history is off. I make sure my beam icon is turned off. Uh, this option actually won't show up until you've calibrated the unit. But once you've calibrated, it will show up. Um, now, once we get uh, that set up, we'll talk about the reverse range. I used to use hide. But I have learned over time, I like the minimum for bass fishing. I use minimum, and then I used the default for crappie fishing. Um, it works good. The reason I use minimum is because the, the overlay data I fit fits in that top left-hand corner just perfectly. Um, of course, uh, on the 32, I, I tend to you know, go toward the lower noise reject. But on the 34, I'm on the medium. Of course, ghost reject off. Um, TVG, I like low, um, and I have videos that talk about each of these settings, but um, here's where my sonar overlay is a little different. I don't put depth on the screen. First of all, I can see my bait fall to the proper depth. Uh, if I want to look to the depth, I can look to the left side of the screen and see where the bottom meets uh, this, those numbers, and it's very easy to tell depth, but also it just doesn't crowd up the screen. Um, I will use water temperature, but usually what I have is I have my water temperature set on the unit at the console, so I don't worry about that. Um, I like my voltage and time of the day. Uh, those are the ones I really, really, really like. Now, I want to go into the installation menu right here and talk about a couple things. One of the ways, to, most important things is seeing your bait hit the water. That is how you are able to find the bait a lot easier. A lot of times if it enters the water and you don't see the splash, you have a lot of trouble. So what a little trick that I like to do on all my clients is I set my install depth to two to two and a half feet, somewhere in that area. And that slides the screen down and allows you to see that splash in that 20, zero to 25 foot range a little bit better. Um, I always set my focus manually. I've only had one client ever where the auto was perfect. Mine on this unit is about 143. I know that because I have it wrote down. And that is, is how I start my classes right there. All right, so there we go. We, now we've, those are the steps that we do when we first get on the water. I wanna make sure of a few things. I'm always gonna first, and I didn't show this on the videos, make sure that their transducer is oriented correctly. Uh, that seems simple enough, but a lot of people don't understand the transducer orientation. And and although I started, I have started filming mostly with the LVS 34, the LVS-32 is very, very popular. And um, from what I'm hearing from Garmin is that they're going to continue to produce it because it is such a popular transducer and you can get it for such a great price. So um, understanding transducer orientation, very, very important. And that is the key. A lot, I would say this much, about 50% of my classes that I go through don't have their transducer oriented correctly from the start. And then once we get that done and then dial in those settings, 
then it's, you know, it's pretty easy. And then you're getting into the teaching mode after that. But uh, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Ring the bell.